having an amazing uh, week, whatever it is that you're doing. We are all about finance today. Um, financial stress, financial pressures, the run up to Christmas. Uh, we know that it's one of the leading causes of anxiety and pressure, especially over the holiday periods where you just have to keep buying things. You've got the Cyber Monday, the Cyber Monday? Cyber Monday, Black Friday, then obviously you have the post Christmas Boxing Day sales, January sales, and obviously with the new start of the year, lots of people are looking at how they can get off on the right foot for the start of 2020. I don't think it's possible. I don't think, I think if you're ex spending all the money through December and November, how can you come out into the run up into January? Well, it's about planning in advance, isn't it, for that December expenditure. Uh, you know, you can start buying Christmas presents whenever through the year. Some people actually buy them in the January sales ready for next year and just keep them tucked away because that's a good way of making sure you spread your Christmas expenditure across those 12 months rather than just all in December. Sound advice. Do you buy the wrapping paper the year before? No, I just always buy wrapping paper, but it, it doesn't have to last one year. You can last more than one year. That is exactly why we have uh, Kathy on the couch today. It's not a couch, but it, think of it as couch. Uh, Kathy has a 10 years in finance, bit of yep. background on yourself, 10 years in finance yeah, so and accounting. I did, uh, 10 years, I've got an accounting and tax background, and I am just known, I guess, for being um, quite good with money outside of work as well and making sure that I live to a budget and don't yeah find myself in debt. So I think this is gonna be a whole lot of fun and um, some solid advice. So we put the question out to you, um, what did you need to talk about? So I'm gonna go through your, your questions. There are so many on here. I'm gonna mix it up and you're gonna go through them. Obviously we're UK based, so if you've got American questions, yeah, we'll wing it. Why not? Yep. We'll see what we can do. Um, and I'm just going to caveat this, that I'm not allowed to give financial or investment advice or anything you take, you do with a large pinch of salt. <laughs> Basically, don't sell your house if if, uh, if we say you should. Um, this is completely... Speak to your accountant. There's a disclaimer in you there. You cannot rely on any of this advice. You can't rely on any of it. Um, that's not true. We, you can. <laughs> um, first question, Kathy. Um, we all... I'm not going to read that. That's a terrible first question. Um... How much money do I need to pay Kathy so she writes my exam? I don't believe in that kind of behaviour. <laughs> Second question. Uh, my mum is a breadwinner and she's getting old. Um, I work but only can afford, uh, afford of myself and house bills. I have zero savings, zero time management. I have nothing. What can I do? I guess it is always quite a bit of a long journey towards that final independence, especially when potentially you're still living at home with mum and dad and you do kind of get used to relying on them. But, you know, like we're saying here, parents are getting older. We do actually need to earn the money ourselves and help pay our way. And I just kind of see that journey as a little step at a time, making sure you're saving a little bit each month. Maybe don't have that coffee. Maybe don't have that cake, magazine, et cetera, and just kind of put that money to one side and slowly but surely it will build up. And if you think about accounts with interest, there's also the compound interest on that. So it will just grow and grow as long as you don't touch it. I guess set some goals as well. Yeah. Like what, what are the goals? When you say you've got nothing, what, what do you want to have? You know, is it to buy a house? Is it to buy a car? Or, or is it, um, you know, to get through university? So I guess having those goals is important. Yeah. As well. And if you set those goals, then you can break them down into smaller goals about how much you need to save each month. And then you can get to those larger goals. Amazing. Uh, Deeps says, uh, personally, I'm starting to become financially savvy and realise cutting down on discretionary um, spending in order to save more is such a big key. I have a question for future terms, though, um, that I previously dealt with. How can I budget if I have a bi-weekly payment scheme, meaning a variable income um, pay cycle? I guess it's about looking at kind of what that average pay looks like over a few months and then working to that as being your budget and then anything on top of that is a bit of a bonus and you can use that money and set it aside for big one-off purchases or bills that might be coming down the line. So don't kind of work to your pay packets, work out what the average looks like and then use that as your budget. 
Yeah, and it's super dangerous, isn't it? If you're if you do get paid and you don't have a budget in place and then you spend it all in the first couple of days and then you run out and, and um, that can be quite a, a stressful thing. Can't and it? a lot of people spend before they've got it as well. They think, oh, I'm going to be paid X, Y, Z at the end of the next week and they've already spent it by the time they've actually got there because they put it on a credit card or in their head they've already spent it and they go and spend it all on that first So day. what do you think of credit cards and, and credit debt? And, um, and then I guess getting trapped in that cycle of having to pay off credit cards with yeah. other credit cards and so on. In terms in the UK, obviously, if you've already got some debt on credit card, use the sites like Money Saving Expert and Supermarket to find those credit cards where you might be able to move for a long bank balance transfer at, say, 0% for quite a few months because that will allow you to pay off chunks. Don't just move it. Make sure that you are then paying it down as well. And it kind of turns into a bit of a game, but you do need to kind of churn through those free interest-free periods that they'll give you on balance transfers. Credit cards are great, but it's all about not spending more than you have, really. You can, you know, there's some great credit cards out there that give you cash back, you know, vouchers, air miles, all those kind of things. So they, some of them are worthwhile using. They also give you more security when you're buying online, but don't allow yourself to spend more than you get. You know, banks give huge credit limits nowadays. Try not to get to the end of them and make sure that your monthly pay packet will pay off. Mm. I guess you can use them for some big one-off purchases like sofas or holidays, but make sure you've got a plan in action to pay mm. them off afterwards because some of the interest rates are also horrific mm. and you don't want to be on those ones. And I guess it's easy to think with a credit card as well that it's your money, um, but it's actually not. Just because you've, you've um, got the credit limit doesn't mean that um, it's money that you can access. Uh, you are going to have to pay it back. And, and if you're stuck on a 26% interest rate or, or something, you know, um, it's going to be really hard and it's going to become harder and harder. But if you are in that position where you've got those huge balances, do just shop around and try and find some of those 0% balance transfer ones and start paying them down. Hmm. Dangerous at the holidays, uh, especially. Yeah. And this time of year, people do. And then you start January with a huge credit card balance that you just think, ah, oh, how am I going to pay it off? So try not to stretch it yourself. Volker said, I turned 18 today. Any ideas on how to get started with investments? Good question, Volker. At 18 as well, I'm impressed. Yeah. So, as I caveated before, I can't give investment advice, but with investments, you've always got to think about the fact that things that go up will also come down. As my dad's always said to me, anything that looks too good to be true is probably too good to be true, but, you know, there are some business out there where you probably could make a lot of money if you invested in them at the right time but it's about having a diversified portfolio making sure you're investing in lots of different things i'd start off small you can also use i think online they have pretend investment portfolios yeah they're really fun do. those games and stuff. yeah and maybe start with that and see where that goes and see whether it's something you enjoy doing otherwise yeah it's probably better to go for a diverse port- portfolio of what you're wanting to invest in maybe some tracker funds that are, if you're in the UK that kind of matching the FTSE that probably gives you the balance that you need but I'd say start small and always remember there is a risk attached to investment and don't get addicted to investing as well I think you can have a couple of quick wins especially if you're in the uh, you know if you're looking at the stock market um, it can become really fun and you can think actually I am who's the wolf of Wall Street what was his name the that guy do you know the guy? I can't think of Leo. Oh, well, Leonardo, Leonardo no, not, DiCaprio. No, it wasn't Leo, um, but the character, oh. um, <laughs> Jordan Belfort. You know, and it can become really addictive. And you can say, well, actually, I know everything about this. Um, I'm going to set up a day trading. I'm going to do the whole thing. And this is going to be amazing. Um, be careful because it's still real money. Yeah, and I think you mentioned be. earlier as well, starting with um, like term deposits and stuff like that. Can yeah, be, start with the simple ones yeah. and see how that goes. And you've also... Yeah, don't once you're on to you know a big run, don't start throwing more money in necessarily. <laughs> and also, by the time most of us get any information about any companies being the next big thing, it's already gone through the markets. Their price has already taken that into account in terms of the stocks and shares. So, so what would sensible. you say? Um, what would you say is a great investment um, for a young person from 18 to 30 years of age? We were talking about this just before the video. What in terms of where you would put your yeah, what do you think is, is something that um, is really helpful, I guess, to get started if you're settling down with a family or... What, like buying a house? Buying a house or... Um... <laughs> I guess it's, it's up to you and what your priorities are. Some people don't actually like the 
the bricks and mortar idea they don't like being like locked down in one place and they'd much rather use their money maybe to put it into something like a term deposit or a tracker fund to see how that goes because over those 18 to 30 years you might be moving around quite a lot anyway and you might not feel the need to buy a house but it's all potentially that goal that a lot of people look for especially in the UK is around getting to that deposit stage and then having the house but also houses are you know where we live they shouldn't necessarily be seen as investments that's kind of what's affected the property market a lot in the UK as well is that people have seen their, seen houses as investments rather than a place to live and that has meant that house prices in the UK have rocketed as a result um, mm. but obviously you can you some people obviously do invest into buy to let properties and have portfolios but that's quite a different business than having your own house pizza prince prince peach says i work two jobs my boyfriend works a job and i feel we still can't meet our bills and handle christmas and my daughter's birthday it's a tough spot yeah and it's really tough especially when you've got kids i think you know there's always that pressure to get them the latest things especially around christmas and to have great parties with their friends Mm. and it's all about kind of making sure that what you do give them you can actually afford don't overstretch yourself just to get them the latest toy that probably by the middle of january they're not interested in anymore Mm. think about kind of the longer term presence that might be better for them um you know so don't overstretch yourself because just because you want your kids to have the latest thing it's yeah a bit of a challenge or if you want them to have the latest thing maybe sell off some of the toys you've got from previous years on ebay make a little bit of cash that you can then put towards your next one Mm. and ebay's also and other marketplaces obviously are great for getting those kind of things because other people's kids get rid of them pretty quickly as well so Mm. if you're if we're talking about kids of toy playing age that is definitely a good place to look as well to save a bit of cash on those big purchases coming up to christmas and birthdays yeah don't stress that's what i'd say you know holidays we put so much pressure on ourselves to buy the best present um you know i know for my little boy i could spend any number of on any number of toys but if you give him a balloon or a cardboard yeah. box um he's probably much more um, and also experiences children might prefer like going out as a family and doing something together is probably just as important to them as them you know getting a toy at the end of the day this is an interesting one. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, Colts McAllister said, my job gave me a fake check and I cashed it knowing that it was fake, not knowing that it was fake. Um, they can sue me and I can't afford a lawyer. What do I do? I would say um, I'd speak to your employer. You know, if they've given you a fake check, um, yeah. that's uh, wildly inappropriate. I'm, and I'm sure you've got some um, some recourse there that you could go and, and, uh, and say, actually, this isn't right. I cashed it, and, and um, I, would, yeah. I would follow that. I don't know if you. Have, I don't know where you're based, but in the UK, you probably want to go and speak, speak to someone like Citizens Advice Bureau and get some advice. There are probably similar organisations around the world to get that advice. Bobbikins um, has said, "Okay, so in Australia we have this thing called zip pay and afterpay. Worst idea ever. Now I use both, and this affects my credit score and credit history. I pay off after time. I also." Um, pay the monthly amount of zip pay i assume that's like a payday um money lending i don't know or if it's one of those things where you like store cards like store credits okay. cards as well um they always tempt you with them there's always like you'll get percent you, you know you'll get money off if you take out the store card today then you forget about it and yeah once you get that debt and you're not managing to pay it off obviously it's going to affect you a bit in terms of credit rating i'm not sure how it works in australia generally actually in the uk if you have these credit cards and store cards they um they do have an effect on your credit rating but it's not necessarily a negative one as long as you pay it off each month but i i don't know what the interest rates then end up on these ones which sounds like why yeah. they're saying it's a bad idea because you leave the balance and you probably end up paying 20 percent more for those clothes that you did to start with yeah the payday loans as well are you know try and stay as far clear of them as you can i know they're super tempting and i know if you've got a bill to pay or you've got rent to pay and you've got like hours to pay it um you know maybe you can negotiate with your landlord yeah uh, maybe you can negotiate with the uh with the your bill. bank or your yeah. bank for an overdraft or something because please read the small prints if you ever see those advertised look at the small print you know we're looking at 1500 percent plus on some of them that is so excessive and so ridiculous and these companies are unfortunately preying on us at the times when we really need the money especially around christmas so 
If you really need to do it, make sure you read the small print, make sure that you are ready to pay that money back as soon as you need to, and don't allow yourself to get into those periods where the interest rates are so high. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really solid advice. Um, and saving as well, savings can take time. Yeah. Kind of. It's not gonna happen straight away, so you can always get tempted to go for those bigger purchases, um, but. Yeah, earlier, you know, we kind of live in that instant society where you can get something from a retailer delivered to your door tomorrow and the therefore... The new Mac Pro, $60,000. 60, <laughs> and therefore, there's always this need to have things instantly. Nobody yeah. really seems to want to save anymore for those big purchases. But you really should, because otherwise you're just living on the never-never. You're never really paying for it, and you're always having it there. And it's just it's quite a dangerous way to to lead a life really there's a really solid bit of advice that i was given and it is wait a couple of days to buy something uh if you still want it in a couple of days then um then it's meant to be um if not um (laughs) yeah are you laughing no no i I was agreeing i go and buy it i was agreeing Um, because i don't listen to my own advice i i will immediately buy everything straight after this see whereas i i have a you know, I do wait six months. No, I don't wait six months, but if I want to buy an item of clothing, which I do quite regularly, I will wait a few days and think if, if I'm still thinking about that item, I will buy it. Hmm. What happened on black Friday? Was it shoes that you were buying or something? Did you wait for two days? I'm just checking (laughs) for everyone back at home. Maybe not on black Friday. They were reduced very, very severely. (laughs) So it was a bargain. It was a bargain. I am the world's biggest bargain hunter. I'll put my hand up and say that. So, Amazing. And that's another way to save money is to also hunt around for those deals when you're looking for something. Find voucher codes, find those cashback money sites, all those kind of things to make those purchases a little bit more affordable. Honey.com, link in the description below. Honey, uh, add it to your browser. Get the voucher codes whenever you need. Last question from Satan Bot. Great name. Love it. Um, suppose I earn uh, X money per month and basic monthly expenditure is around X how much should I get per month to have enough for savings and future and in case of emergencies I think you've touched on this there's this the different methodology around yep. savings um, the, the rule the 50 30 20 yeah the 50 30 20 so just to reiterate that that's your 50 on your essentials your 30 on your discretionary and your 20% at least on savings um, is kind of the best way to look at it but Find something also that works for you. Yeah. There's no point putting 20% in savings if you by the end of the month you're living on nothing. That's yeah. just not the way. <laughs> that doesn't work either. We don't want people starving to save their 20%. Yeah. And also, um, you're only going to claim or you're going to pull that that money straight out yeah. in the next month. That's not really savings. Savings should be yeah. a long-term exactly. strategy. Um, last question for you. Um, what would be your key bit of advice for someone who... Um, is uh, perhaps struggling to think how they're going to get through the holiday period. They just um, are not quite sure of um, how they're going to manage it. What would be your one bit of advice outside of everything else you've you've already? I think I would say please do not stress about it. It's all based on material things. The important things over Christmas are to spend time with your family and friends and loved ones. They do not care what you buy them. I guess some people might, but I really don't think they should. It should be about the time that you spend with people, not those material objects that we buy. If you're starting to panic and think, I haven't bought enough for people, just stop there. It will be enough. Whatever you get will be enough for people. It's a thought that counts. You can just give them a bit of paper that says, I'm going to buy it for you in future. Or like, I'm just going to take your dog for a walk or babysit your kids. You know, (laughs) things that are free. (laughs) If I got that. Oh, thank you. You're going to take my dog for a walk. I mean, okay, you don't have a dog, but if someone has a dog. (laughs) I like it. It's a good strategy. Um, And then maybe you can get their present and sell it and then... Yeah, I'm all about the selling, not people's presence, obviously. We have to go, but uh, I do hope you have an amazing holidays. Um, and, and please, there's some great advice in there. If you're really struggling, if you have more questions, leave them in the comments down below and we'll get to them. If you have a strategy, perhaps, for saving or... Yeah, I'd um, love to hear that too. Or your investment strategy, please don't spam bitcoins or, or <laughs> things at us, um, but we'd love to hear it, yeah. And uh, have a great rest of the week. Yeah, see ya. Bye.